In a sea of light duty tough torque transmissions and disposable Briggs engines, are there any gems here? Okay, but I'm still not doing it. Ah, so they can force you into buying their $40 filter. So this is the cream of the big box store crop, huh? If you're looking for a quality, long lasting mower, here's my advice. No! 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 Yeah! What is that, buddy? A tractor. Hell yeah, it is. Who makes the best tractor engines, bud? Kentucky. Oh, you're gonna piss off all the Kohler fans, but it's true. First released in 1990 and sold for 12 years, the F525 was John Deere's A for effort, first attempt at a zero turn mower. Gambling that owners would turn away from the now universal hydro design in favor of a traditional steering wheel, John Deere engineered this mower with a slick front-mounted deck and a forklift-style rear-wheel steering system. The rarity of these machines should clue you in as to how well that gamble paid off. At the end of the day, this design was costly. List price for this 95 model was 5700 bucks, or 10 grand in 2021 dollars. It was also riddled with inherent design flaws and bubblegum fixes that made it about as usable as an 11mm socket. Besides the green color being sticker-bombed with legalese warnings, and the array of classic 1990s John Deere idiot lights, there's not much shared with its stablemates. The deck comes on and off in about three frustrating hours the first time you do it, and in about five minutes on your second try. I made a tutorial video if anyone needs it, link in the description. Three blades, suck on that peasants with your two blade mower decks. The powertrain is unique to this mower and is unlike anything I've ever seen on a lawn tractor. Mounted down low for a better center of gravity, the PA540A unitized power unit is essentially the venerable 17 horsepower Kawasaki FC540V with a hydraulic pump bolted on where the oil pan should be. You can see this Frankenstein setup better from underneath. There's the top of it. And under here, where the oil pan should be, you can see this weird sci-fi contraption. This is what it looks like removed from the engine. It's the most complicated oil pan I've ever seen. The pump's piston even has piston rings like an engine. Theoretically, this thing should outlast humanity, which isn't saying much these days. Surely anyone with a 90s John Deere has had experience with a cracked plastic hood. Unfortunately, the complex bodywork on this guy is made almost entirely of that same plastic. Note to future self. Invent zip ties that are perfectly color matched to John Deere Green, patent it, and buy a private island. The first noticeable flaw with this design is traction. If your property has any low spots or hills of any kind, just forget it and buy a normal tractor. The John Deere F525 has the ground clearance, curb weight, and off-road ability of a Ford GT. Coupled with a poor weight distribution, and it's a wonder John Deere made it so hard to put this thing into towing mode because you're going to be doing it a lot. It's clear the engineers tried to fix this last minute. This pedal pulls up on a cable attached to the deck, theoretically transferring weight towards the front to temporarily boost traction. They also give you these corny wheel weights which bolt onto the rear wheel to help you steer in slippery conditions. When the going gets rough, none of these engineering hacks work, and you're going to get good at putting it into tow mode. Most tractors have a simple lever on the rear diff you can pull to put it in neutral. This has no rear differential, so all you have is this push button valve here. Since it's spring loaded, you have to loosen the bolts for this bracket, push it down onto the button, and then with your third hand, try to tighten the bolts without it popping back up. Once you've accomplished this circus trick, you can hook it up to a winch and tow your beached whale back out to sea. The sheer hubris of selling a snowblower attachment on something with such little traction. Without tire chains, it's a joke in the snow, which is why this one is slowly returning to nature. One of the biggest drawbacks with this mower is speed. Here's a John Deere 265 for comparison. Despite these mowers being powered by the same engine, this contemporary 265 scorches the earth with a top end north of 7 mile an hour. Light years ahead of the F525's 5 mile an hour top speed, Put it in a drag race, and the results are inevitable.
This really is not the mower for you if you've got lots of long straights to mow. Cruising at five miles an hour with a beer in your hand sounds like it could be quite relaxing. But there's no cruise control. Not over here. Ignition, PTO, throttle, parking brake lock, forward and reverse levers, and the parking brake pedal up here. There's no way to maintain speed if your foot gets tired and you want to take your foot off the pedal. Pages upon pages upon pages of warnings, and not one mention about the dangers of skipping leg day. This is really boring. In order to demonstrate how frustratingly slow this is without hurting my audience retention score, here are some kittens. It's the same story with reverse. You could push it faster than this. But here's a trick. Hook your foot under the forward lever and pull it up. Three miles an hour may not seem like much of an improvement, but believe me, with this steering setup, that's plenty. So if this machine has so many flaws, why am I so in love with it? Firstly, it doesn't weigh 700 pounds for nothing. Do this with a modern tractor. Except for the body, every single thing on this tractor is built like a shh brick house. And there are numerous advantages to having the deck mounted way up front. All three blades cut the grass before the heavy tractor tires trample it. Theoretically, this leaves a smoother cut. Also, the front deck allows you to penetrate under pine trees and things that you couldn't with a normal mower. Another great design feature of the deck is how far offset it is to the left. Hey honey, I need you to move your car so I can mow under the bumper. Psych. It'll mow under a tree, it'll mow under a bench, under yard debris, and hanging out over a trench. But my absolute favorite thing about this mower is the way it corners. I could do this over and over until my neck hurts. It's even more fun with a screaming toddler in your lap. The turning circle is limited by how much grip the rear wheel has. It's more of a rudder than anything. So while it manages zero degrees on pavement, on grass, you'll need to pull some fancy footwork with the forward and reverse levers to pull it off. The front arms that make it look like a cicada can also be used as crude appendages if you practice. If you have a long driveway and a bin full of dirty diapers and used cat litter, trash day can be a real chore, but not with the F525. But it's not trash day. I'm just showing off. The sturdy frame and overbuilt transmission design makes it great for towing trailers, as long as you've got traction. One unanticipated benefit of rear wheel steering is how damn easy it is to back up a trailer. Since this behaves like a normal front wheel steered tractor when you're in reverse, you're effectively pushing it with the front bumper. I wish I was this good on prom night, it would have been a lot less awkward. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a used mower and you don't have too many hills or low spots, you can't do much better than an F525. It may be an 11 millimeter socket, but it's the best damn 11 millimeter socket ever made. Thanks for watching.